yeah, we think about content a lot. And and I don't I don't know if it is my uh, just my general interest in the creative arts and media marketing. That's part of what I oversee at the POL that has led to this OCD in a way of, of production. Um, or if it's just knowing the path to growing, in our case, a game is through content. And so um, as athletes, you know, part of what we're known for is our attention to detail. And that usually comes out in practice. I've found with athletes who successfully take the next um, you know, step in life in business or media or whatever it is that they choose to do, that, that practice, that work ethic translates to other things. So I try to apply that same obsessiveness that I've had for 24 years of playing lacrosse to other things that I do. Hmm. I mean, I was an athlete. Um, A really fucking good one. Oh, <laughs> no, um, I saw that you went to the Indy 500 um, yep. a couple of years ago. Uh, I don't I don't know if I have that same thing. Like I like I don't mind being on show and being on. But then when I come home, I hate people up in my space. Mm. You know, I mean, even, you know, any money in the world that could afford as many people to cook and clean and take care of, I, I wouldn't want that because I don't like people up in my biz, yeah. um, meaning just in my space. Like, I don't care. I'm an open book. It's not a privacy thing from that standpoint, but just, do you ever get a little, like, I don't know, does it get old as, uh, I mean... I mean, we I wake up in the morning and the camera's rolling in the red light. And then you're like, man, I just let me get the sleepy eyes out of my eye before I I'm, yeah. I'm exaggerating. It's probably not that intense, but there's definitely a lot of a lot of filming happening. Yeah. I mean, our our origins are much different, right? You and, and what you're able to do to not only racing, but your uh, stature in the world of of sports and media and business was so big pretty quickly that the media that was coming to you um, was around the clock and probably invasive. Um, what my relationship to media has been through lacrosse, which was and is still considered by many a niche sport, that when I graduated from college in 2008, the game wasn't even being distributed on broadcast or cable television. Right. And I had a Facebook fan page that was picking up tens of thousands of followers organically. And it kind of tipped me off to, um, you know, to, to, to build or to create a life in doing something that I loved, I needed to build the media on my own. Mm. And so my relationship, I think, was different from yours and its origin. But in the end, yeah, privacy is super important. I just think being a lacrosse player versus one of the most famous athletes uh, of the last decade. In your case, I can turn that on and off when I want to more easily than you could. Huh. That's an interesting perspective. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm going here because I think that, well, first it was obvious to me that there was that this, you know, you are so ingrained in the promotion of it, in the explaining of lacrosse in, yeah. In, and and also just I think you know just to help people have someone to cheer for like when I watched that video of you being at the Indy 500, I know that Colton Herta knew who you were because he's probably watched tons of your videos. Like okay. he played lacrosse and he could follow you, so he knew you well. Um, and so, but I think that the reason why it's it's important is because this is what gave you. It's first and foremost, it's what's giving you the ability to promote lacrosse mm -hmm. but it's also probably what gave you the idea to even start a league like 100%. the fact that you had the vision so you know I know I'm kind of putting the cart before the horse talking about all the background of it and the videos and promoting and the vision um before we even talk about the league itself but I think that that came first yeah I mean it would be like if you or that's needed Totally. If, if you, when, when you won your first indie car race and that was such a big scene, imagine having done that in front of a quarter of uh, the stands full and no coverage across sports yeah. center, you would have been like, okay, this was, it doesn't displace the meaning for you as an athlete. 
Like when I won, won a championship 10 years ago, it feels like the championship two years ago. But we care so much about what we do and we know that other people are just like us because you've met the next young girls and boys that are aspiring to be the next Danica Patrick and I've met the next young girls and boys that are aspiring to be the next professional lacrosse player. So they're there. They just didn't know how to access the pro game in my case. So, you know, we learn as athletes along the way through our sports sponsorship and agency representation and PR and learning how the teams in my case are run and the leagues run in your case, how the tours are being put together. We learn about the business. There was a need for me based on how I'm ingrained to, to, to either amplify it or fix it. If I was an IndyCar racer, I would never even have thought to have done that because the business was working, right? And it, was, it would have been more about, okay, how do I continue to grow? So I had this like complex as a professional lacrosse player. It's like, damn, what I'm doing is so much fun and fulfilling. Am I having to scrape the bottom of, a, of the barrel for a living? Yes, but it shouldn't be this way. And I was seeing what the UFC did. We're seeing what F1's done in the last seven years. We're seeing what, you know, even like a lot of individual sports that have continued to grow um, in team sports, like the WNBA, it's like the, the market is out there and it's not this massive moat in the nineties where it was just football, basketball, baseball. So I had no sports business experience. I knew really? how to build companies. Yeah. Because it was, you know, it was just applying problem solving to any scenario. So a lot of like reading and researching and networking and asking questions, but I knew it was out there. And to your point, when we were creating media through our social channels, originally it was just to talk to our fans. Hmm. And then it became like, oh, damn, through the comment section and other things, like people really like lacrosse. How do I, how do I then help it become better? So <clears throat> where did this business mind come from? I mean, or capability even. Yeah, I think that it came from really two areas. One is when I was out of school, um, the rookie wage that I signed for was like sixty five hundred bucks, and then you know, at that, my sorry, a year. Yeah, for the season. Yeah, it was brutal. Like we were you can't even live on that. That's not even minimum no, wage. No, it's not. And I had a uh, I had a job at the time with a real estate company. I was a uh, an analyst, kind of like back my way into a job because that's what. A lot of athletes who even are playing division one at their highest level, if there's not a pro game, then you move on to the workforce. It's like the enterprise commercials. They're always pitching on like athletes going into the next stage of their life when there's nothing else to, to take the next step. And that's how lacrosse was. Um, but I was like, you know, figuring out how to pursue being what I wanted to be at the time was the best player in the world and one of the best to ever play we had world championships every four years. So I was training my ass off, but also to point number one, trying to figure out how to get a reasonable wage. And mm -hmm. so yeah. uh, part two is, all right, well, if, you, if you're known in your sport, what are some ways you can make extra money? Well, through appearances, through endorsements, and then through what I was running at the time, a, a camp and clinic business. Mm -hmm. So I was basically traveling the country, teaching kids and families and coaches lacrosse and then you know picking up registration fees from it so yeah. i was fucking scrapping like doing yeah. shit that like i bet you and i don't really want to do because it's pretty humbling to like travel to indianapolis with a bag and like some lacrosse pennies and work with like 150 kids and like you know uh stay at a like a a pretty like you know a grimy hotel and like try to like have nice margins. And so I was learning the principles of business by necessity. And then I would pick up everything along the way with my Under Armour sponsorship and then a Red Bull sponsorship. Then I got access to stuff that other athletes mm -hmm. at the highest level were doing. I was going, Oh, this is what it could look like. Well, I mean, endorsements and showing up and getting paid for things tends to be a lot easier yeah. when the sport is bigger and the name is big. You know what I mean? Like that. So like as that being a way to make money, it's also still not easy when the, 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 the eyes aren't on what you're doing as much. So, you know, teaching kids is probably, a, you know, definitely a lot of, a lot of that time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was a ton of time, uh, but I had to think about things like 
marketing my camp business and um, you know building an LLC to protect myself legally and taking out right. insurance on fields and you know, <laughs> customer service with parents who wanted to cancel the day before because their kid got injured and like all that shit was running through my um, you know small company at the time and I hired an assistant and uh, and was figuring it out. But on the sponsorship side, I know from speaking to different brand managers I've worked with, they, uh, and it was because of that curiosity, it was also, you know, when you get, when you're constantly, you know, a second or third tier athlete, and this is just to give people who are listening, how like either close or if they're younger and listening, how, uh, how long it felt away, but it feels close to you and I is 2008 to like 2011 or 12. Um, and that was, that was when people were just like, there's professional lacrosse that exists. And, um, and like, who is this guy? And so you, you, you build thicker skin. So I was probably a little bit more, um, maybe ambitious and, uh, and almost like negligent in the way that I would work with my brand partners and ask them for approval on like marketing assets and like, Oh, who is the photographer? Who's the videographer? How are we shooting this? Can I look at the storyboard? And I was always kind of interested in that side of the business. And maybe it was because I never thought that I'd be able to make it too long in professional lacrosse or what I was going to do next. But all of those bits and pieces were now a part of what I do today with the PLL because it's you know, running the league. There's so many aspects to it. 